If you want to add a sauna to your property, but you are not sure whether you should get an indoor or outdoor sauna, you have come to the right place. In this video, I will give you six pros and cons of building both indoor and outdoor saunas. After watching this video, you will understand which one you should get based on your unique situation in order to achieve the best possible sauna experience. My name is Veeti, I'm a Finnish sauna expert and since 2022 I have successfully helped over 1000 US based sauna builders complete their indoor and outdoor sauna projects. So when it comes to functionality of your sauna room, you can create the exact same sauna functions to an indoor and outdoor sauna, as long as you are not limited by space. Of course, the experience of sauna going itself is going to be very different between indoor and outdoor saunas, but when it comes to the functions happening inside the sauna, meaning heat distribution and Löylu, so the steam that comes when you throw water on the sauna heater. You can achieve the exact same functionality with both indoor and outdoor saunas as long as you are not space limited. Before we actually get into pros and cons of both indoor and outdoor saunas, we need to understand what makes a great sauna to begin with. Even though we have an in-depth tutorial in this channel about this topic, and we do have a free online course and online community at the saunasociety.com that will go over sauna building itself, I will give you a quick look of what great sauna looks like. So when you have a great sauna environment, the first thing that comes to mind is that you have equal temperatures. So naturally when it comes to sauna, achieving equal temperatures is the most important thing, but it's also very, very difficult. The reason for this is that when you have your sauna room, so let's imagine this as your sauna room right here. So when you have your sauna room, the hot air is always going to rise up. So if this is your sauna heater, the hot air is naturally going to go towards the ceiling. That's because hot air is lighter than cold air. On the other hand, the cold air in the sauna is always going to plummet to the bottom parts of the sauna. So this can create quite an unpleasant sauna experience if your head gets very hot and then your feet are cold. Because what happens when your head is hot and your feet are cold is that your body will aim to equalize the temperature. So your body will start actually heating your legs and cooling your head. So you don't want to have a sauna that has unequal temperatures. So that's the first thing. You want to have equally hot sauna. Second thing that comes to mind when I'm thinking about what makes a great sauna is having enough space. So let's put here having space. So what this means is that laying down in a sauna is actually very enjoyable because then your body is guaranteed to be fully into the same temperature zone. So you want to have enough space to first of all lay down for let's say two people or one, one person depending on your situation. Then what you want to have is that you don't want to be sitting too close to the sauna heater because if you have a sauna building where you have the heater here and let's say you have one level of benches here and then you have another level here and third level here. So if you have to sit very close to the sauna heater, let's say in this area, I'm sorry my drawing skills are not the best, but you are going to get this radiant heat from the sauna heater. So this radiant heat feels unequal and unpleasant. So you want to have a sauna that is large enough so you don't necessarily need to be right next to the sauna heater. That's also a safety consideration because you will easily burn yourself the sauna heater if you have to be too close to it. A uh, few other things are told in this uh, in-depth tutorial that we have, so I'm not going to go deeper into this topic. Let me now give you the pros and cons of outdoor saunas. The first one being that outdoor saunas are usually more expensive to build. So you need to build a solid foundation to your sauna. Then you might need some insulation if you live in a very cold environment. And building a separate building in general is typically more expensive than just integrating a sauna into an existing room inside your house. Then the second thing is, uh, and this is the first positive, 
Last one was the first negative, now we have the first positive. Is that an outdoor sauna is easier to build correctly. Because you are not going to be limited by space. You can build it as high as you want to and you can have enough space inside your sauna rather than trying to fit something super small into your garage, basement or an existing closet. So it's easier to build an outdoor sauna according to best practices of sauna building. We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. I own a company called The Sauna Heater or thesaunaheater.com and we sell the highest quality sauna equipment in the USA. Whether you need a full-blown finish sauna, a sauna heater or any equipment for your sauna construction project, we got you covered. Head to www.thesaunaheater.com and you can chat or call our experts, me included, and we will help you select the best possible gear for your sauna project. Now, let's get back to the video. Next thing is that outdoor sauna consumes slightly more energy. So this is not exactly true in every case. So if you live in a very warm environment, your outdoor sauna won't actually consume more energy. But if you live in a cold environment and you have a separate building in your yard, obviously the starting temperature when you start heating up the sauna is lower and this consumes more electricity or more energy if you heat it with wood-fired heater. So that's our second negative point. Then we have our second uh, positive is that outdoor saunas are nice and simple to ventilate. So basically when it comes to outdoor sauna you just put an intake vent behind your sauna heater and then you put an exhaust vent on the opposite wall somewhere here. This is actually called a drying vent. Uh, drying vent and then you put the normal exhaust vent here. So what this achieves is that some cold air comes from here to your sauna heater, uh, cold air with uh, high oxygen levels. It mixes with the warm air rising from the sauna heater, so you have good oxygen rich warm air rising from the sauna heater. Uh, then some of the heat and humidity escapes through the drying vent and some of it escapes from the exhaust vent. So you have this nice airflow inside the sauna that equalizes the temperature. So it's nice and simple to ventilate. Also, you will always have fresh air coming in from here. Uh, well, not if you live in a super polluted city, but typically you will have fresh air coming into the sauna. And then also you don't need to worry about the exhausting humid air, because that humid air, if it exhausts into your house structures, it will definitely mess up your house. So in an outdoor sauna, the nice and simple thing is that your air is always going to find its way into the nature and you don't need to worry about it. So the ventilation is easier to actually do for an outdoor sauna because you don't need to think about how can I get fresh air to come from my intake vent and you don't need to think about where are you going to exhaust the hot and humid air uh, without it damaging your house. So nice and simple to ventilate. That's a big advantage of outdoor sauna. Then, third negative of building an outdoor sauna is that it might require building permits depending on where you live. Uh, this can be pretty difficult to actually get. So that's something to keep in mind. And then the last positive is that it's more natural and meditative experience typically to go into an outdoor sauna because you are surrounded by nature and kind of part of it while you enjoy your sauna going. So when would I choose an outdoor sauna? I would choose an outdoor sauna if I lived close to a nature if I wouldn't have adequate space inside my house to actually build a sauna. In case I want a wood-fired sauna, so this is a big thing, especially if you have an existing house structures, it's very difficult to actually integrate a wood-fired sauna into your house. So if you want this authentic sauna experience and the authenticity that comes from wood-fired sauna heaters, you want to take a wood-fired sauna heater, you want to build an outdoor sauna. And then if you have a pool, jacuzzi, cold plunge, and you want to integrate this with your sauna experience, it's usually easier to do with an outdoor sauna. So in most of the cases and most of you watching, you are much better off building or getting yourself an outdoor sauna compared to an indoor sauna. Next, let's talk about the pros and cons of building an indoor sauna to yourself. So our first positive is that indoor saunas are easily accessible. The sauna is already inside your house. You can just walk in there and you can easily turn it on 
and it's super super simple and easy to use when it's raining outside when it's snowing whatever is happening in your area you can just enjoy the sauna inside your house without having to go through the rain to your sauna and so on and so forth so first positive is that they're easily accessible our first negative is that integration of the sauna into your existing house so you have pretty much three options you can put the sauna into your basement into your garage or integrate it so basically convert convert an existing room uh, into a sauna but neither one of these are very easy to do and they can also cause a lot of problems so you have the high humidity so that's that's the problem behind basically all of this stuff so what i mean by that is that when you throw water on the sauna heater it creates the steam that is called lolu in finnish that's the most enjoyable sauna air but obviously this steam needs to go somewhere and if you just let it go into your house structures and you increase the humidity inside your house uncontrollably what will happen is that your house structures will get damaged and your house will rot and decay so you need to find a way to get the humid air out of your house, out of your garage, out of your basement, out of your integrated room. So that's the difficult thing with ventilation. Another difficult thing is that you need to be able to bring in fresh air for the sauna covers to breathe inside the sauna while they are sweating. And if you are bringing in air from the room next to your sauna, it's typically not very fresh and not very optimal. So actually getting the ventilation and Handling the water management, handling the humidity is very difficult when it comes to an indoor sauna. So the second pro of building an indoor sauna is that you will have an easy access to your indoor sauna from your other washing facilities. So in Finland, indoor saunas are typically integrated as a room next to your showers. So this makes it super simple to just go and sweat in the sauna and then clean up yourself and be done with it. So if you are building a new house, this is an approach that all Finns have used forever and this is the approach that I would recommend you to do if you get an indoor sauna. This is pretty much the best way to make your indoor sauna is to when you are actually building the house, when your architect is designing the house is that you integrate it into your layout uh, as a room next to the shower room so then you can think about everything. Our second con of making an indoor sauna is that making a great one is pretty challenging because typically you are restricted by space you don't have high enough ceilings uh, you need to make a very small very small sauna uh, you are very close to the heater you are not properly elevated compared to the heater and as said getting the ventilation going getting fresh air in it's very very challenging and then if you have to put something to your basement your basement is typically again too low most of the indoor sauna kits are too low to follow the best practices of sauna building you can't really fit anything proper to your garage uh, in most of the cases so making a great indoor sauna is a challenge so our third pro of building an indoor sauna is that it consumes less energy and heats up faster. So I have to put a caveat here. So the thing is that this depends where you live. But a lot of guys that build saunas, a lot of our clients live in colder parts of the USA where it gets very, very cold during the winter. So obviously if the starting temperature of your sauna is higher, so when you start heating the sauna, if the temperature is already higher, let's say it's... Uh, 65 compared to being like zero Fahrenheit outside then obviously the sauna that is already 65 Fahrenheit heats up a lot faster so when you start from higher point it heats up faster and consumes less energy of course this is environment dependent if you live in a warm environment this might not be true for you uh, then our last con is that it heats other house structures again this depends where you live but especially during the summer wherever you are the sauna is going to transfer heat from the sauna itself to your house structures uh, and thus heating your house when you might want to cool it down so we can actually consume more energy in in that case so depends a lot about the environment uh, where you are so when would i choose an indoor sauna myself so if you're designing a new house then i would definitely 
uh, make an indoor sauna, put it as an integral part of the house, because this doesn't restrict you from later on, let's say, building an outdoor sauna with wood fired heater if you have an indoor sauna room next to your shower room with an electrically heated sauna. So then you can sometimes take the authentic sauna bath and then sometimes take uh, just a quick and easy route when it comes to turning on your electrically heated sauna. And also it's nice in the credit part next to your shower room, increases the value of your house, as I said. So I would definitely build it if I would be at the designing phases of my house and I could do that easily. If you have a very big garage, very big basement, uh, and you don't really have the outdoor facilities, let's say your yard is not very nice or it's very packed or you can't get a permission from your city to build an outdoor sauna, but you have a big garage, big basement where you can put a pre-built uh, indoor sauna, then I would do that. It's nice and easy solution to get yourself a sauna. Uh, if you can handle the integration issues, so if you're going through bigger renovations in your house, you can uh, make sure that the Havak professionals look into the ventilation of the sauna, you can make sure that it doesn't damage your house structures, uh, then I would build an indoor sauna. If you don't have attractive outdoor spaces, so if it's very noisy on your yard, maybe you have a super little yard, or if you live in an apartment building and you don't have a yard at all, then I would build an outdoor sauna space for myself. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. Comment your thoughts down below, I will answer all of your comments personally, and go and watch this tutorial on how to build a perfect sauna to yourself.